Hello, thanks for tuning in. I am Dr. Prakash Gambhir, Chief Medical Scientist at LifeCell. Today I am going to discuss about fetal autopsy. How fetal autopsy will help you in your clinical practice in arriving at a gen correct genetic diagnosis as well as it will help you in management of future pregnancies as well as uh, prenatal diagnosis. Now we know that ultrasonography is nowadays a very powerful tool in able hands. It can detect fetal growth retardation as well as structural malformations at very early stage of pregnancy. But we must remember here that though ultrasonography can give you diagnosis, it is not the genetic diagnosis. For genetic diagnosis, we have to resort to the DNA methods as well as we have to resort to actually seeing the fetus whenever a pregnancy ends, either in termination for congenital structural abnormalities or a fetal demise. And here I must uh, tell you that we have got very small time in our hands in the sense that if we don't sample the fetal tissues at this time, then the fetus will be disposed of. Also many studies have shown that fetal autopsy and actually observing, dissecting and uh, examining the fetus can give much more additional information to our diagnosis of which is provided by ultrasonographies. So Indian studies have shown that more than 30 percent of instances fetal autopsy gives more information. Foreign studies have also shown a range from 20 percent to almost 60 percent in some studies. Now let us see how ultrasonography can add information. So there is worldwide agreement that the fetal autopsy can add more information to the ultrasonographic diagnosis. How can this be done? Let us see the simple example of open neural tube defect like a meningomyelocele. Now many pregnancies are terminated for meningomyelocele, but meningomyelocele can be a part of so many syndromes. So when we give search command either to OMIM or say London Medical Database, then more than 100 syndromes may pop up when we search for meningomyelocele. Similarly, we know that skeletal dysplasia is diagnosed late in pregnancy. Skeletal dysplasia have got more than 400 entities which are responsible for it. So you may have a diagnosis in late stage of pregnancy of skeletal dysplasia with you, but that will not help you in future pregnancies when the same couple is going to come with you with this ultrasound report. For that, you have to have a proper genetic diagnosis with you so that you can help in early stage of pregnancy with proper prenatal diagnosis. So that is how it is very important to study either a terminated fetus or a fetus who have got, has a uh, demise during pregnancy with fetal autopsy. Now you will ask me in any case genetic syndromes are rare and they are very difficult to diagnose even in a grown up child. How can you diagnose these syndromes in a fetus? For that I would like to show you some images. Now look here, this is a time of some 18 fetus which is terminated at 17 weeks of pregnancy. It is showing the same facial features as that as of this newborn which is one day old and is admitted in NICU. So it is not difficult to diagnose a syndrome because same features are present in fetus as well as the newborn or in a child. Now look at the other picture. Here you see again a Cornelia de Lange fetus which is terminated at 17 weeks of pregnancy and here this fetus is having the same dysmorphic pictures as are seen in this two month old baby. You can see the same low set hairline, the anterior nares as well as the uh, broad philtrum as well as synophrys which is joining of the eyebrows. The same features are present both in the fetus and the child. So it is not difficult to diagnose genetic syndromes in a fetus provided you have got this proper approach. What is this approach? Whenever we terminate a fetus for structural malformations, we must see the fetus closely. We tend to use the terms congenital abnormalities, birth defects, congenital anomalies, deformations, disruptions in a very haphazard manner. That should not be done. What we should do is that whatever abnormalities are there, we should classify them according to their definition into their proper categories. So this approach will help us in identifying the abnormalities as well as the cause which has led to these abnormalities. This approach is very important and this is called as fetal dysmorphology. 
Now I will show you some uh, uh, pictures of fetuses with same ultrasonographic diagnosis. Here we see three fetuses with common etiologic diagnosis of arthropyriposis multiplex congenita. Here the top left fetus is having restricted dermopathy, while the other fetus, that is top right fetus, is having a condition which is distal myopathy. The lower down fetus is having multiple pterygium syndrome which is of lethal type. So three diagnoses, different diagnoses, but here the common sonographic diagnosis was arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. Similarly, if we can look at these fetuses, this carried a label of skeletal dysplasia, but you can see that all the four fetuses had different conditions. Here you can see three fetuses with meningomyelocele. The top meningomyelocele, the top left is having isolated meningomyelocele, while the top right is having OEIS syndrome, ompilocele, extrophy of bladder, spinal defect uh, syndrome, while the lower fetus is having a meningomyelocele, but it is actually having trisomy 18. So again, same sonographic diagnosis of meningomyelocele, but with different conditions. So that is why whenever we, we examine a fetus, then we can have a proper clinical diagnosis also. Now here I am going to showing you four fetuses with same defect, but different etiologic cause. So here you see first fetus with bilateral cleft lip and cleft palate, but here the defect is actually a malformation and this is an isolated defect. So the risk of recurrence is not more than 4% because this is the only case that was a child that was there for the couple. The top right that you can see here is actually a oblique cleft palate that is because of a congenital amniotic band disruption sequence. The left uh, lower is a fetus, very interesting fetus, actually a very rare case of craniomicromelic syndrome. Here also the fetus has, you can see, a U-shaped cleft palate. So the shape of that cleft palate is because of a normally developing tongue which is falling back on the hard palate and this is because of the very small size of the mandible. So the primary event or actually malformation in this particular fetus was a small mandible or what we know as micrognathia and because of the tongue falling back it has obstructed the normally developing uh, hard palate as well as soft palate producing a u-shaped cleft. The left door is a, again an interesting fetus. Here you can see the median cleft lip, median cleft palate was also present in this fetus and this actually belongs to a variety of skeletal dysplasia which is known as mohr majorski syndrome. So far we have discussed regarding how fetal autopsy can aid in arriving at proper diagnosis in case of a fetus which is terminated for congenital abnormalities. Now I am going to talk about the help that fetal autopsy can render in case of a intrauterine fetal demise or a fetal growth retardation. So here we not only look at the fetus but also take into account the placental histopathology, the placental findings as well as what I feel is more important is the umbilical cord pathology and umbilical cord findings also. At live cell what we are doing in this is that we are following the Amsterdam protocol which was there in the established in 2014 and this follows the international classification not only regarding the lesions of the placenta but also how the placenta should be examined. So how the placental loss pathology should be examined, how the section should be taken and how the various lesions that are histopathological that are to be classified is guided for. This Amsterdam protocol therefore can be compared across the geographies, across the countries, across the nations and here at Live Cell we are striving very hard to follow this protocol as well as the Stockholm classification for the etiology of uh, stillbirths. Now I will tell you about how we perform fetal autopsy at Live Cell. First of all, we ensure that a proper informed consent from parents is obtained. Here we tell the parents regarding what we are going to do in the, to the fetus and most importantly how we are going to ex dispose the fetus off. This is a very sensitive issue for the parents. So a proper informed consent is obtained from the parents. Then the fetus comes to us. When the fetus comes to us, what we first do is we take good quality photographs. This helps in documentations as well as syndrome diagnosis. 
then we perform uh, x-ray of the fetus whole body of x-ray of the fetus is known as fetogram this is done from a ap angle as well as from a lateral angle to ensure that we don't miss any skeletal dysplasias or any bone abnormalities then what we do is a morphometry so we take external measurements of the fetus like head circumference as well as the chest circumference abdominal circumference various distances like the intercapillary distances or inter intercancel distances as well as the limb as well as all the measurements now we ensure that this is accurately taken then we go about performing the dissection of the fetus so this is performed very methodically we follow again here the international guidelines we take photographs of this dissected fetus also we sample various tissues as well as wherever congenital abnormalities are present then we dissect that organ in a very methodical manner for example congenital art defects whenever they are there we approach it in a systematic manner so we can typify the what type of the congenital heart defect is present then with help of all these findings we also have a placental histopathology findings wherever placenta is also available for us for examination and with collection of all these findings then we arrive at a differential diagnosis of uh, conditions which are there in the fetus with the help of databases we narrow down our search to a final diagnosis and here again we take into account the laboratory investigations which are available to us for example cytogenetic microarray that or cma studies that are there or exome sequencing studies are that are there or karyotyping studies are there so that we arrive at a proper genetic diagnosis of the fetus now here all these things are documented in our laboratory information management system and they can be retrieved any time as well as with clinicians we share important photographs whenever they want it as well as the proper report is given to the patients as well as to the clinician so at life cell what we do is that we follow international standards that are there for fetal autopsy as well as placenta histopathology when we are, we, we are giving reports for fetal autopsy and placenta now we will come to a very important part of fetal autopsy namely the tissue sampling now this tissue sampling is very important because we can have a genetic diagnosis from this tissue samples and for this we must ensure that the tissue samples are obtained before the fetus is kept in formalin now formalin can damage the tissue dna so a tissue which is fixed in formalin the sensitive techniques like cma or exome sequencing cannot be carried out in a damaged dna so that is why we must ensure that the samples are collected in a proper container before the fetus is kept in formalin i prefer the tissue from fetus axillary skin because he this touch tissue is not usually touched this was very important in the era when karyotyping was the only tool that was available for genetic diagnosis nowadays cmas are there where karyotyping can be bypassed but still we must ensure that bacterial contamination does not occur as well as the tissues are obtained from untouched parts so that is why axillary skin with little bit of uh, underlying subcutaneous and muscle tissue is a very good uh, uh, sample from which we can act, obtain satisfactory quantity of dna as well as dna this dna has a good quality after the sample is collected we must put fetus into formalin immediately because if we delay putting fetus into formalin then a process of autolysis starts autolysis is autolysis of the tissues by the enzymes that are present in the tissue and this yields poor results on histopathologic examination of the organs so that is why after tissue samples are obtained then the uh, fetus must be immediately kept in formalin we provide a tissue culture medium in which we can put in the tissue sample that is collected so this tissue culture medium nourishes the tissue sample as well as the dna quality is ensured so far uh, i have told you regarding how we approach fetal autopsy at life cell now for a good fetal autopsy report i request you some things at your end also what i request you to have is uh, to give us proper consent taken from the parents as well as uh, you give us a proper clinical history you also provide us the sonography reports that were there during the pregnancy as well as other investigation reports we have constructed a container which is uh, there 
specially designed for fetal autopsy. So from anywhere in India, you can transport the fetus back to us with the help of these consent forms as well as the container. Now you must ensure that this container is available to you from our local live cell person so that all the things are there with you like a tissue culture medium as well as the fetal container. I also request you to discuss this case with either with me or our geneticist team or the genetic counselors team so that you can decide upon the DNA te test that is to be carried out on the fetal tissue sample beforehand so that you can explain this to the parents. Sometimes we do not come to a conclusion in which case I suggest that you go in for the DNA isolation and then we can work out this DNA for the test which is pro properly suited for the fetus. So with the help of fetal autopsy report and placental histopathology report which follows the international standards at live cell and with the help of genetic investigations that are there on the offer, we will help you to arrive at accurate diagnosis of the fetal conditions, accurate genetic diagnosis of the mutation of the gene that is involved and help you to offer proper and timely prenatal diagnosis for the couple in future pregnancies.